What's going on, everybody? So it is July now, which means we are past the halfway mark of the year so far. And if I'm speaking truthfully from the heart here, I don't think it's been an amazing year for movies overall. Obviously, there's some great ones and stuff I like, obviously. But overall, not feeling too hot on this year. But don't worry, we still have so much more to go. A lot of exciting movies. I think it's really going to start to ramp up, at least for me personally. And uh, with that being said, that's going to transition us to the Oscar predictions. I'll be doing the above the line predictions. I've had some of these predictions done since May, and um, I wish I really kept up with putting these out because then I would look cool. But, um, you know, some things have come out now. We've learned a little bit more about some movies and performances. So now I'm not as cool anymore. And I feel like I'm a little late to the party, even though I, I could have been one to uh, really, really be the, the leader for, for some of these. But whatever, I'm rambling now. Let's just get to the predictions. Best picture time off the bat. Let me repeat, I should have said this earlier, it is July, which means it is super early, which means I can take some swings. There's no reason to get upset or heated about any of these things, okay? It's just not necessary. Anyways, Sing Sing's at number one, and I agree with people that are a little skeptical of it. I myself am skeptical. It's coming out in a few weeks here, at least as of when I'm recording, and uh, I'm not sure if it'll get buried or drowned out by all the noise, but... As I've said, the SAG Ensemble is too strong. I think there is a winning package here. But if you don't want to put number one, and I have no problem removing it from number one, I don't I don't really know what else to put. Like, are you going to put Dune? Like a Nora? Like, we'll, we'll get to those, but I just don't know what else to put. And until something really forces my hand to, I will have Sing Sing at number one for a bit. Number two is a Nora that won the Palm Door. I would put this at number one, but... Even the people who have seen it and absolutely loved it, I feel like there's some skepticism there also. So that makes me a little confused. Some people are going to think the movie's too long, apparently. Who knows how that is? It will have some sex, which is fine with me. But, uh, you know, we, we just had poor things. So maybe that's not a big deal anymore, or maybe it just... It does weirdly turn some people off. I don't know. As of now, I can't justify putting it at number one to win Best Picture. I just can't do it yet. Number three is Dune Part 2. Here's a bunch of nominations. Congratulations. Joker. Maybe I am too high on Joker personally, but again, I really just think considering how much they love the first one and they are taking it into a new direction that will make it feel at least fresh. I think it'll be there. So I have Joker number four. Maybe I'm too high on it. Whatever. Five is The Room Next Door. We do have confirmation that uh, Pedro Almodovar works insanely fast. This movie will come out this year. Sony Pictures Classics will produce it. It is his first English language film. The dude just works, you know? Like, he just puts in the work, and the Oscars are like, here you go. Anytime he comes out with something, his movie walks away with at least some nominations here. And, you know, as unfortunate or as unfair it may seem... When you are making an English language feature, it is just taken more seriously for whatever reason. I have no reason to doubt it. I have been pretty high on this movie for a bit, you know, not to take credit. Obviously, it can't take credit for that. It's not a hot take or anything, but uh, I have it at number five. Six is the Nickel Boys. Um, this is where it gets a little weird for me, okay? This is where it gets a little strange, so walk with me here. The Nickel Boys, if you have read the novel or you know the story, it could be a real tearjerker. An incredibly emotional movie that feels like the small movie that just works its way in because everyone is crying over it i have a feeling it'll be that i'll put it there seven is blitz and um the day i'm recording actually i'm, I'm glad i waited a few hours before i did this it is going to premiere at the london film festival as a world premiere and i believe that starts in mid-october which means it's skipping pretty much the quote-unquote normal film festivals at least the fall ones like tiff like telluride like new york that might seem concerning for some now i understand the i don't know what you got the historical context of that i think it makes sense to premiere at london would i have thought of that myself no but it makes sense the other thing though is that it's not getting the normal theatrical release that apple has given other movies like napoleon like killers of the flower moon like fly me to the moon it's not even doing that and that that's a little odd, okay? That's a little odd. It is coming out in November, though. So, that I mean, that's a good release date, I guess. I don't know if they were struggling with partnering for someone with distribution. I don't know. I'm not going to jump ahead. I know some people are already like, oh my gosh, Red Flag movie's a bust. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit in between. I'm not going to, like, obviously, like, who knows? I'm not going to just fully remove it. But that is odd. 
I can't lie, that is a little odd. So it's down at seven. And um, even before that, I felt like the buzz on Blitz was just kind of a little muted. A little muted. We'll see, though. Obviously, Saoirse Ronan's amazing. I love her so much. Eight is queer. Uh, Luca Guadagnino just continues his good year, hopefully. I mean, people love challengers for the most part. And uh, we think this is going to be the one to really propel him. Two movies in a year. They'll usually choose one. The other one boosts up the other one. And I think Queer is the one to take that. So that's good. Night Bitch. I have been on Night Bitch for a long time. And as I reference, we'll get to another category soon. I wish I put this video out earlier so I could have seen so cool Lisa Nagai type shit. But anyways, we'll get to that. It's at number nine. And ten, I will cave and I'll put Emilia Perez in. When Emilia Perez premiered at Cannes, I just never got the best picture feeling, even from the reviews. I never got that, even from people who liked the movie. But, you know, I, I guess as I've sat on it, as I've taken in information from other people, I've read more reviews about Amelia Perez. It is bought by Netflix. You can't underestimate that. I'll have it in. I have no problem with that. Uh, quickly go over through 20, Conclave. I'm excited for Conclave, even though I'm not even a huge All Quiet on the Western Front fan, as people know. But literally, just every time I've mentioned Conclave, people are like, oh, so you haven't read the book. Th that's the most common response is anytime people have seen Conclave high up in Best Picture, they respond with, okay, like you told on yourself, you haven't read the book. It is not an Oscar-y thing at all. I, I will trust the readers. Obviously, you can adapt things in a different way, and I it still is, seems to be folks' main push for Conclave. Um, but, uh, I will have it out for now. Whatever. See to the sake of fig. I can't tell how much of a thing this is really. I don't know if people are just trying to push it for goodwill or if this is nothing, but it's at 12 regardless. 13 gladiator two, as I've said many times before, and as I'll repeat myself this year, can't quit really Scott. It might be awful. Okay. We have to admit this might be awful. The pictures that came out today though, Look pretty fire, I can't lie. Look pretty gas. And I'm excited for Gladiator 2. And I say that as someone who fucking hated Napoleon. 14 is a piano lesson. I just don't feel a lot of passion for that. And um, it, I don't know. It doesn't feel like a thing. But that, that's just my opinion. Maria, Pablo Lorraine. Um, who knows? It could be Jackie. It could be Spencer. Which basically means no best picture. We'll see though. A Real Pain. I am not a believer in this movie. And this isn't one of those things where it's like, oh, I don't like the movie, therefore I'm not a believer. I like a real pain. I just don't see it for best picture, at least, as other people do. That's just me. Jury number two, similar to Gladiator 2, could be an absolute bust. Clint Eastwood's directing it. The log line is just so fucking fire, though. Like, I'm really excited to see it. Could be a thing. Hard Truth, it's Bleecker Street. If it wasn't Bleecker Street, I would have it higher up, but whatever. 19 is Wicked just because of the text, and 20 is Nosferatu because I can have a little fun with it. Best Director, again, like, I just present me another option, and I'll go for it. But Denny Villeneuve, you can tell me he gets snubbed again, I'll believe you. You can tell me he sweeps the season, I'll believe you. Therefore, I'm just going to throw him in at number one. Placeholder might be too harsh of a term, but I'll have him at number one for there anyways. Sean Baker for Honora. I'm more willing to put Sean Baker number one than Honora for number one in Best Picture. But regardless, Sean Baker's there. I think it'll happen. It's time he's recognized. Greg Quetta for Sing Sing. I just, if I have it winning picture, not that I need it in director, but I'd like to see it happen. I think it's a very well-directed movie also. It's not entirely flashy though, so it's a little tough. Luca Guadagnino, again, great year. It's time to, for him to be recognized as well in director and Pedro Almodovar in the room next door. It, again, I just, English language, it'll happen there. Again, not feeling great about director, but whatever. Six is Mohammed Rasulah for The Seed of the Sacred Fig. That one, again, I can also see happening more easily than The Seed of the Sacred Fig in picture, but regardless, it's there. Todd Phillips, you never know. It does look very flashy, so we'll have to see how that goes. Maria Heller for Night Bitch, again, I believe, but it's going to be a little tough. I Trust me, I still hear the concerns of Overnight Bitch, so I take that into consideration. Edward Berger for Conclave, just on the off chance that Conclave is a big thing. And if the All Quiet year, if the nominations happened a little bit later, he probably would have gotten nominated, let's be real. And Jacques Audiard for Amelia Perez, because why not? Best Actress, again, I've had Amy Adams at number one for months before it was announced that Night Bitch was going to TIFF before 
it was announced that she is going to win the TIFF Tribute Award, which has a good correlation for at least an Oscar nomination, going back to Joaquin Phoenix, to Anthony Hopkins, to Jessica Chastain and Benedict Cumberbatch, to Brendan Fraser for The Whale, to Coleman Domingo for Sing Sing, even though that's a little odd, but whatever. So yeah, that uh, that buzz is gone, and uh, any bragging rights there doesn't count anymore. But regardless, I have her at number one. Seems the most out there outside of Lady Gaga, which we'll have to see. But uh, yeah, if Night Bitch isn't in Best Picture, I'm going to have to rethink everything. So whatever. Angelina Jolie for Maria, that just feels like a very safe nomination. Very safe one. Therefore, she's at number two. Mikey Madison for Honora at number three. Would like to see this happen. This is really off the strength of Honora because she's still, in the grand scheme of things, pretty unknown. Don't know if they will snub her or just reward her. But whatever. I'll have her at three. Lady Gaga for Joker. This is if Joker is a flop, which it absolutely could be. If Lady Gaga isn't good in Joker, it could happen. I love Lady Gaga, honestly. Not even like as an artist, I think she's great. And as an actor, I think she's great. The House of Gucci shit, not her fault. I believe she's at number four. And Tilda Swinton for The Room Next Door. I mean, Pedro Motivar, he gets them actors in. So I have no reason to doubt that. Sir Ronan at six is a tough cutoff. Um, there's some word like she's technically a supporting role, but she's going to be campaign and lead. I really don't know. She's still Saoirse Ronan. It's tough. It's tough to leave her off. I just don't know who to take out. Carla Sofia Gascon for Amelia Perez. I'm getting mixed things again for the campaigning of that and the placements. I'll wait until confirmation is there. Marion Jean Baptiste, Florence Pugh, Jessica Lang for that movie that might not actually exist. It gets a little weird. Best actor, Coleman Domingo at number one. And um, I, I think this should happen, obviously. I, you know, not having seen some of the other ones, I believe it. He is incredible in Sing Sing. I, I think the movie is great, but I think he is even better than the movie. And uh, again, I say that as someone who did not like Rustin, and I, I didn't care for his performance in Rustin either. He is amazing in this one. It would be a deserved win. And uh, technically, the TIFF tribute, was for Sing Sing, but some people thought it was for Rustin because of the strikes. They couldn't say it. No, he's that good in Sing Sing. So I have him at number one. And uh, I won't move him until I see otherwise. Daniel Craig in Queer. That seems like a good time to recognize him as an actor with an Oscar nomination. And also, obviously, I have Queer in Best Picture. That lines up. Joaquin Phoenix. I, I typically wasn't going to have him this high up. But just with some of the other things that's been happening, some of the other contenders, I have him in there. Ray Fiennes for Conclave. I guess it is a good role regardless of whether how Oscar friendly it is. So that's that. And, you know, I just I just don't want a lineup of like all best picture nominees. I took a swing. Andre Holland and the actor. Why not? This isn't one of those things where it's too young, like Ethan Hurry's down there for the Nickel Boys. Like, oh, could that happen at all? Who knows? He, he is a seasoned actor. A lot of great stuff in his work. Obviously, he was in Moonlight. It would be fitting. It'd be fitting. And it's literally called The Actor. So why not? Six is Sebastian Stan. Um, the Apprentice. Who knows what's going on with The Apprentice? It, first, it like a was bought by some company that I forget off the top of my head. And then I was like, oh, the producer actually has veto power on it, who is a Trump supporter. So I don't know. Is this movie even coming out this year? Who knows? But uh, until I get like confirmation... I'm just going to leave Sebastian Stan kind of where he is, um, how I had him a few months ago. I'm just going to leave it there. I won't really touch it. Seven is John David Washington for the piano lesson. I don't know exactly. I feel like the reviews for him uh, during the play were like, fine. Like, it was good, I guess. Not really feeling the passion for that, but whatever. Paul Bettany in the collaboration. Nicholas Holt down there at number 10. I mean, who knows? Like, fucking Paul Meskel for Gladiator 2. Like, I don't, I don't know. Anything is possible. Best Supporting Actress... Um, I would have Danielle Deadweiler at number one, but then I would have the piano lesson, spoiler alert, having two wins in supporting categories, and I don't have it in for picture. Seems a little odd, so I'm going to go with Julianne Moore for The Room Next Door. Don't know why. Just put her there. Two is Danielle Deadweiler, as I said. Anjanou Ellis Taylor and the Nickel Boys. So this is one where I heard she is playing the grandma there, but some people who read the book says it's not a big part. But then also it's like, oh, the name has changed. So maybe they are giving her more of a bigger role, which makes sense because she is Anjanou Ellis Taylor. So that makes sense. So I'll have her at number three. Tony Collette during number two. I can't believe she hasn't been nominated since The Sixth Sense. Crazy times we live in. And then I have Zoe Saldana for Amelia Perez because I don't buy his three daughters either. And again, I like the movie. The performances are great. I don't buy it though. So I'll have 
Zoe Saldana in instead. Isabella Rossellini, I've just heard too many things, again, from people who read the book, being like, this is such a nothing part. I can't believe people are buying this. They can obviously adapt it, as mentioned, but whatever. Leslie Manville and Queer. Joan Chen and Dee Dee, who's amazing. She's fantastic, but I just, that's an uphill battle that I don't think will end well for that movie. And Connie Nielsen for Gladiator 2, because why not? Supporting actor, this is where I will have Samuel L. Jackson in for the piano lesson. I've heard too many things about it. I'm just going to have him there. Clarence Macklin and Sing Sing, absolutely amazing. Just, I don't buy the Paul Racy thing at all. And shout out Paul Racy. He's great. But Clarence Macklin is the standout here. Absolutely. You can trust me on that. Three is Denzel Washington for Gladiator 2 because he's Denzel Washington. He gets in for less high, higher profile movies. And with how up in the air supporting actor is, why not? Stanley Tucci and Conclave. Makes me a little nervous to have two acting categories for Conclave. But um, again, uh, sure, I'll trust it. Why not? Five, I have Drew Starkey for Queer. This is one where, obviously, like, whatever. I really don't know. But I'm just writing off that Queer is just the biggest two-hander. Who knows? Please inform me, those who have read the novel. Please inform me. I realize he is an unknown actor, pretty much, to most people. So, I don't know. You can put in Kieran Culkin. You can put in Harris Dickinson in, which are my six and seven. It's just, it's tough. A real pain, again, I don't know if I see it getting, like, a bunch of nominations like other people do, but whatever. Jeremy Strong in The Apprentice. Sorry, bud. Heard great things about it, but don't know how that's going to happen. Jeremy Pope, Mark Edelstein for Anora. Like, eh, I don't know. Original screenplay, Anora at number one. Blitz, Seat of the Sacred Fig, Room Next Door, Real Pain. Boom. I think that's a clean five. And uh, it most assuredly will not be the actual Oscar nominated five because it never is at this point of the year. But for now, I'm comfortable with that. Then it gets a little odd. I was actually struggling to figure out what to put here. Hard Truths, His Three Daughters, The Apprentice of it comes out. Jury number two, Dee Dee. I've seen Challengers in original, which is weird because I thought Challengers was adapted. So now I'm all confused on why people are putting in original. But maybe I'm the stupid one. But uh, yeah, th those are my ten. Who fucking knows? Adapted Sing Sing as a winner. That feels good. Queer getting in. Okay. Conclave. Mm, I didn't change that. Um, but whatever. I guess I'll have that in. At least Conclave makes more sense as an adaptation can play. So now, now I'm now I'm confused because I have Conclave in a little too much if I don't have it in picture. But whatever. Dune Part 2 gets in and the Nickel Boys there. The adapted category actually feels more crowded than the original. Uh, again. So the piano lesson. Night Bitch, I kind of want to put Night Bitch in, whatever. Joker, the collaboration, Gladiator 2. I haven't talked about here. Um, I should have talked about that at the beginning, but uh, here, yeah, I saw the still, saw the trailer. I never bought here. No reason to change my mind on that. I don't really buy it as an Oscar contender, at least for picture. What are we talking about? But yeah, those are my uh, above the line categories here uh, for the month of July. Let me know what you all think and uh, put it down in the comments below as long as we are all civil, which is cool. Should get uh, a lot more interesting here. Uh, should get a lot more interesting. I'm very excited to see all of these movies listed here, even the ones that I don't think are going to be very good. I'm excited to hopefully go back to TIFF, where I've met so many of you and I see all these great movies. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a good year. It's gonna be a good rest of the year. Trust, okay? But uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time.